Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is a part two video. Part one was outside corner joints and the application was building a tank, an expansion tank for coolant for a supercharger. It had an automotive application. Well, today we're doing lap joints because we've got to weld some mounting tabs on this thing. So it's Roy Crumrine, my friend from down in Florida, is doing the fitting and tacking and welding. I'm doing the arc shots and we're putting it all together in hopefully a good video. So let's get going. For all you welding students out there, there are five type of weld joints. Not weld types, but weld joint types. Corner, lap, edge, butt, T. And we're going to take a quick look at them all right here. This is an outside corner joint. Very common for building tanks or a battery box or something like that. Lap joint is up next. Also a very common joint. Imagine putting an overlay patch on a dumpster or a sandblast cabinet. You would oftentimes use a lap joint for that, although it probably wouldn't be out of aluminum. But a lap joint is a very common uh, joint for patches and brackets and tabs, mounting brackets. And an edge joint. Now what I'm showing you here is just a buildup on a piece of metal. This is uh, eighth inch thick metal, but it could just as easily be two pieces of 16 gauge sandwiched together with a flange type operation for a duct work or something like that. Butt joint. That's where two pieces just butt up right together. Butt weld. The term butt weld is actually a non-standard term. And if you're a student, you'll need to know that. And then last is a T-joint. Also a very common joint for gussets and things. All right, well, let's get back to the project here. Roy's going to put a little mounting bracket on this little tank. And He's got a lot of these to do, like probably 20 or so, and so fixturing and clamping on each one of these would add several minutes to the operation. Really not necessary. So he could just put that little spacer plate under it and get a couple of tacks on it and save lots of time. He's done one or two of these before. So he's going to get a tack on each top corner here, being careful not to nudge it around while he's getting those two tacks on there. Anytime you get a couple of tacks on one side of a little piece like this, it's going to pull, a, pull out a little bit on the other side. So all Roy does here is just puts a big aluminum block, wedges it up against there, mashes it to get it kind of tight, tight enough where there's no gap until he can get an attack on it. In fact, he's just going to weld it out. You might think he might need to get all four tacks, but I'm guessing that Roy has done like bunches of these and knows that the, the bottom is not going to pull apart. I'm using a Pyrex cup here just because it seems to help a little bit filming. We're always using a standard Lumina number no. 5 cup with a Speedway SW320 water cooled torch. A nice small torch that carries 320 amps water cooled. All right, a little dry run there, and he's going to weld this one out, and then we're going to show you an arc shot that I did trying to mimic Roy's technique. Actually, come to think of it, Roy did this when I was <laughs> I was at Roy's house shooting this one months and months ago. So I figured, why not clip in Roy's shot with Roy's weld on the tank here? That's all she wrote. All right, since that part is wrapped up, let's let's talk about welding techniques now. You can notice here that I'm stopping each time I add filler rod. And while that's not completely necessary, some guys just move the torch hand in a nice steady motion. I find that stopping just momentarily, just, just a little bit, lets me not have to think about using both hands at one time. And also I clean up a lot less electrodes that way. And if you move ahead the same increment each time and add the same amount of rod each time, well, that's what will give you that nice, even stack of dimes look where the ripples are evenly spaced and you got uniformity. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week. If you like this sort of thing and you're, you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now's your chance. Just hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in welding cups or a TIG finger or something like that, visit the store at weldmonger.com.